Today I'm going to show you how to make a simple scene in Unreal Editor for Fortnite and be able to walk up to a button, interact with it, and it will play a cinematic camera move. Let's get started because I love Unreal and I can't wait to share it with you. In this tutorial, we're going to make something super simple and start with the basic level. So I want to add an object to my scene and orbit a camera around it so then we can create a button that will play our cinematic. To do that, what we're going to do is we're going to find something in our props folder. Let's scroll down and find something we like. Let's say, sure, happy helmet. Not sure what's in here. We got these little toys right here, so I will just add that to my scene and I will go to my location and zero it out. Cool. So now what I want to do is create a cinematic that is going to have a camera orbit around this. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to go up to our main folder in UEFN. I have this main folder called UEFN tutorial. We're going to right click in our content browser and then we're going to add a new folder. We'll call this cinematics. Right click on your content browser and then you're going to go to cinematics and you're going to add a level sequence. We'll call this your first animation. Sweet. So now we can double click on this clapboard and you'll see this window pop up. It's called the sequencer. Now I have mine docked in the bottom of my content browser here, but if you don't see it here, it might be under your Unreal FN as a separate window. Fortunately, you can click and drag and dock it by looking at the cube trapezoid UI so then you can dock this wherever you want. Or you could just undock it. But we'll put this here just because I like to stay organized this way. This cinematic sequencer is basically like a video editor. If you're familiar with DaVinci Resolve or Windows Movie Maker or Final Cut or Premiere Pro, it's basically the same thing. You have your timeline. This is indicated in frames instead of time. And right now it's playing at 30 frames per second. Good rule of thumb for filmmaking is to make things in 24 frames per second, but your frame rate is purely up to you and your game. So we need to make a camera for this. So we're gonna click on this button, create a new camera and set it as the current camera cut. Cool, so now when we click that button, we have a camera in our scene. If we can go to our outliner in the top right hand corner, and we can see here that we have this Cine camera actor. I like to rename my cameras based on the sequence that it's in. So we'll double click on this camera, hit F2 on our keyboard to rename it, and we'll call this cam underscore first animation. All right, we need to animate this camera. Right now we see that our frame got a little blurry and that's because it's behaving like a real camera where there's depth of field. So we see this playhead here, we're gonna bring it to the very beginning and then we're gonna adjust a couple camera settings. First, what we're gonna do is go to the first camera and we're gonna go to our focus settings. We can see this focus settings here, we have our manual focus distance. We can pull this number down until our objects are in focus just like that. Cool. So now if I hold right click on my mouse, we can see that we are moving our camera around and I'm gonna position where I want my camera to be. So let's say we'll put it right here in front so we can see the tank. Cool. Make sure my focus is right. And if you want to be a little bit more accurate with this, you can go into this draw debug focus plane and you can turn this on and off and it'll give you a plane in your Z depth on what things will be in focus. Just a little helpful tool. I'm gonna to turn this off because I like this. Now I wanna move this camera a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is under my camera, I have my transform property down here. If I select this button, it'll add a keyframe to this camera. Now, if you twirl down this transform option, we can see that it's adding a keyframe for our location, where it is in the world, the rotation, where the camera is rotated, and our scale. Scale is how big the camera is, but that doesn't matter for cameras. If you're animating an object, scale does matter, so keep that in mind. So with this keyframe set, we can now scroll to the end of our timeline, and we can see that if we move our camera by holding right click, and then it'll add a new keyframe. We can see that down here. Now, a little pro tip that a lot of animators will use is auto keyframe. So whenever you change a property on an object, it will add a keyframe by default. So let's say hypothetically, I wanted to make my timeline longer. So what I can do is I can go to this end 
bracket right here, this red one, this is the end of the animation, and I want this to be 240 frames, like that. Now, we need to make sure that this camera track, just like a video editor, is taking up the entire length of our camera cut track, so we can drag that out there. Now, there's no keyframe at the end of this sequence, so I'm going to go to the 240 frame mark, just like that, hold right click, and adjust my position. Now, it did get blurry, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one more thing. What's really cool about the sequencer is that whenever you have an object in your outliner and you bring it into your sequencer, you have this plus track option. And you can add different properties to this sequencer and animate them. This can get really complex, but we're going to do a really simple animation here. Now, fortunately, most cameras will come with the properties that we want to animate for the camera. In this case, we want to animate the focus distance. So what we're going to do is we can see this number right here. We can change this value in our sequencer. We can see that our focus is changing just like that. Or we can go back to this property in our details panel of our camera. Up to you, however you like to work is purely preference. Now, we just changed the manual focus distance of our camera, but we can see on our sequence here that there's no keyframes on it. So we need to make sure that we select a keyframe there, then we have to go to our middle keyframe and we have to adjust the focus distance again. So let's do that. And then we'll go to the very beginning and adjust our focus distance again. Just like that. Now, if you go to the details panel of your camera, we can adjust our focal length, how wide or narrow the shot is, or our aperture. Not going to get into camera tutorials here, but I like 24 millimeter lenses. It's a bit wider of a shot and looks a little bit more natural to the human eye. So now if we hit the spacebar on our keyboard, we can play that back. You can see our cool little animation. Now, I bet you're asking, how do I play this in my game? So what we're going to do is in our viewport window, we have this little eject button right here. Right now, we're piloting our main camera, but we can leave that here. And now, if we hold right click, we can move around. And if we hit G on our keyboard to show our widgets in our scene, we can see that we have our camera here. And if we scrub through our timeline, we can see that the camera is animating and doing exactly what we just did. Now I want to be able to play this game and trigger the cinematic whenever I hit a button. So I'm going to scroll to the very beginning of my timeline and I need to add a couple things. First off, in this level, I have no player spawn. So I need to make sure that I add a player spawn so then I can actually play my game. So I'm going to go to my Fortnite folder and I'm going to go to my devices and I'm going to search player and I'm going to add a player spawner just like that. Now back in my Fortnite devices folder, I'm going to search up a cinematic. And then as I'm typing the word, it will autofill what it thinks you're looking for. And I'll drop this into my scene. And I'm going to set the location to 00, zero just like that. Generally speaking, it's a good idea to put your cinematic object wherever your camera is focusing on. So from here, what I need to do is go into my cinematic sequencer, advanced sequence, and I'm going to select your first animation. Now, it's not going to do anything right now, so what I need to do is first add something that's going to trigger it. So I'm going to go to my devices again, and I'm going to add a button. So I can search button, and we can add this right there. Cool. I'm going to put it directly in front of my character, just like that. And just to make it a little bit more immersive, I'm going to put it against a wall, so it's not just a floating button. So go to my props. I'll go to castle and I'll find a wall that looks fine. Sure, I'll take this one. That looks good. Now I can hit E on my keyboard, rotate, make sure that it's set to negative 90, and I can just put this in place just like that. Cool. Now we need to do a couple things to this button to make sure it plays our cinematic. So first we need to click on our button right here and we can zoom in by holding right click and we can see that there's some options here. Interact time where whenever you press this button, it will take a certain amount of time to press the interact button. So then it will trigger the option that you're trying to make or which team can activate this button. Not going to get into more details other than this. We can see some advanced things, but right now we're going to keep it super simple under the user options functions. This is basically, this is the function of this object. We can go to enabled and we can hit the little plus sign right here. 
And when we hit the plus sign, we can see that we have this index here. It's basically the option for triggering this button. So we can go in and see this drop down menu. We can select our cinematic sequence device. Cool. So now that's here. We can adjust a property if we need to, but right now we're going to keep it set to none. After we set up the button in our scene, we need to set up the cinematic sequencer device that we added earlier and make sure that it's connected to the button. And the way we're going to do that is we select our cinematic sequencer device in our outliner, go down to user options and play function. Basically, how is this object going to play? So here we will select the add element and we will go to this drop down menu and select button. After we select the button, we're going to go to the second drop down menu and we're going to select on interact. So basically when this button is interacted with, it will play our cinematic. So once that's all done, we can go up to our launch session, click on the three dots, make sure that we have live edit on and launch on this PC, or you can auto start game up to you. And I'm going to hit launch session. It's going to take about five minutes to boot up Fortnite, and then we can test our button and play our cinematic. Once Fortnite is open, we can move around in our scene and we can walk up to our button. We can see the interact button. And if we hit the E key on our keyboard, hey, look, there's our cinematic that we just made. And that's the end of the tutorial. Now, obviously that cinematic is super simple. And if we hit the windows key and we jump back into the Unreal editor, we can add so many other things to our sequences, such as animating objects, moving things around, lots of things you can do to help create your games. But I hope this gets you started. Now, if we hit the windows key and we jump back into the Unreal editor, I just wanna let you know that if you twirl up this camera and collapse it, there are so many other things that you could add. You could add other objects, you can add audio, you can add a fade in and a fade out. There's so many things that you can do in Unreal to help make really advanced cinematics. With that, I will leave it here. Thank you so much for watching. Hit that like and subscribe button because it lets me know that I'm making content that is valuable to you and you want to learn more about unreal things. Until next time, my name is John Jacksney. I appreciate you and I will leave you with the final tip. Eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight and you will make some games. Goodbye, my friends. Bye.